Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. You guessed it, we've got a new laser. All right, this is the new Monport Mega. It is a 70 watt CO2 desktop model. So super powerful for desktop, but also huge. So we'll see how desktop that is. Um, if that just means it doesn't have a cabinet, that makes sense. Got a lot of other cool new features. Um, I have opened this already, uh, just to make sure that it wasn't broken. But one of the cool things on this is that it actually has uh, different connector points. So these were on, they're pinched over, and that's what holds it on, so there's no screws. So all I had to do was hammer these back up. Yeah, as you can see on the bottom one. So I hammered those up. There were six, seven, eight, nine, there's ten of them to hold just the top on it. So, let's uh, back open. Okay, and now we can take a look at how it's packaged, what's in it, how good it is, and uh, let's take a look. This is really nice foam, so it does look like it's foamed really well. This looks like a base plate or a plate for inside of it. Don't know, we will find out. More foam, great, oh, okay. Honeycomb base, so hopefully the instructions tell us what uh, the other one's for, but that is a very nice laser bed. Another piece of foam separating. All right, now we've got to the actual laser. Oh, and I can already tell it is full of foam, and it's got these. I wonder if this is to help get it out. Uh, let's see if this foam, okay, okay, yep, yeah, just partial coverage of the corners, so we should be able to get both of those off, yep, fairly easily, let's see, I don't see anything down the sides, and yeah, that's, that's going to be my guess then that this is made to help you pick it up and get it out. Uh, it's too heavy for me to pick up. That was a lot to get it moved. It is heavy, definitely not a one person. The straps did make it nice to pick it up, um, one on each side. And most of the, the foam at the bottom was really holding it in, so once we got it past that, it was fairly easy. Now, let's open it up and see what's in it. That's tight and a little nerve-wracking, but there was nothing holding it down. Feels like there's just a piece in here that's probably a sensor to make sure that it's closed before it'll run. Nice packing inside. Let's see what we've got in here. Water, so water goes somewhere. Just gonna put that on the side. Oh. Very nice. Exhaust. Let's see. Oh, okay. PVC piece to uh, do the sizing for the exhaust. Clips for something. Power cable. USB cable. It is a USB to USB-C. Let's see. Oh, interesting. This has got, it says Mega here. It's got USB-C. I don't know. I know it's supposed to be wireless, so maybe this has something to do with that. This is a very nice case here. Looks like maybe just uh, spare parts. Oh, but that's nice, extra screws. Oh, so these are just test cards, like you get with a lot of them. Probably black aluminum, so you can um, laser off the black. Uh, that looks like a target, so I'm not sure if this is how you do any kind of lineup or testing. But very cool. Allen wrenches. 
That just looks like, uh, yep, acrylic. I can't tell if it's actually orange. More foam. Let's get the acrylic moved. Instructions. That is a big booklet. That is awesome. And, oh, okay, so that piece plugs in and then the computer plugs into it. Which means this end should come off. Yep, there we go. All right, we'll figure that out later. More test pieces, this is awesome. Uh, looks like a cup, two pieces of clear acrylic. Bunch of cardboard. And then some plywood. That's really cool. Most of them come with small ones. This is awesome that it comes with bigger pieces. So we'll be able to do lots of testing. Without fear of ruining good plywood or good acrylic. I think that's enough now. Oh, I popped up in that piece. Water. All right. That looks like everything so far. Oh, there's the camera here you can see. Then the laser head. Very nice. Doesn't all want to move, so I'll leave it until we actually get it turned on. Looks like a control knob. Okay. Little magnet piece there, you push, it pops out. Controls over here. The USB and the emergency button. That's nice. I don't love that this is just stick on. That's going to wear off. On the back, it looks like here's your vent, your power, your cable. Another push, so that's a pass through all the way. And there's a panel on this side. I don't, know, I don't know what's in here. Maybe can. Maybe this is just the uh, inlet for air, and then the outlet's over there. Uh, doesn't look like it's super easy to open up. If you need to see the laser, or sorry, the tube, or replace it, or any of that. So I think it's time to read the manual a bit, and then uh, we'll be back and see if we can get it turned on. Got it already. I've been reading through the instructions and the first thing it says to do is to take off the back panel. So I figured out the different screws. There's four inside and then there's screws underneath holding the back panel in as well as a couple of screws holding on uh, the power uh, little piece. So you got to take that off. It's got two there. They're actually backed with nuts, so they will fall in and be careful. I've also noticed that your clearance with the exhaust section is really, really tight. So you've got to kind of wedge that out from underneath it. And then the whole panel lifts up and out. It's actually heavier than I thought it would be as well. Like I said, there's two screws on each side underneath. Three on that one actually, two on this one, two here, and then four across the front that are inside of it. You gotta take all of those off, and then you can get behind it, and we can kinda see what's going on here. Now this is where your coolant gets filled up, and then I'm gonna pull all this foam out. That's for shipping so the tube doesn't get damaged. Put a little bit of water.
water in this, but we're going to make sure and get it capped off. Right here, this is also a really cool function. This is the fire extinguisher. It's got a built-in fire extinguisher. And, yep, that's where it's built in. All right, so we've got the funnel that it came with, as well as, it says antifreeze. Yeah, definitely something in it. It's not stray water, uh, so be careful. There's also, in the instructions, it does tell you that if you're in uh, below zero weather, that there's some math on adding antifreeze to it to make sure that uh, it doesn't freeze. So, and then you just fill it up to the line. All right, so it says do not exceed the fill line. I don't see a fill line, so I've made sure that it's up above where the inlet tube is to go up and in, as well as it's still just barely below where the outlet tube is, so shouldn't have any problem with that. And then we can set the funnel aside and make sure and get your fill cap back on. Okay, the next step, it actually says to close it all up and go to the exhaust side. However, I want to make sure that the pump's actually working and cycling water. So we're going to plug it in. Okay, it definitely turns on. It's filled with water. I'm turning it back off. All right, for the exhaust, the piece that it came with, this is super tight. You just have to kind of play with it a bit, get it into the right spot, and then it'll go. Very nice hose that it came with. Fits on the end. And then you can, you know, just hose clamp it down. I don't have a hole set up in the right spot or anything, or if we need to put it into our regular air, so we'll probably get another uh, flange that we can go straight into this and take it straight outside. We don't have that right now, so we'll do a little bit of testing without it. Make sure you're in a well-ventilated area if you are doing it this way. But we won't do a lot of cutting until we have that piece in. So after that, then we're supposed to plug it back in now. And we start working on uh, going through software if you need to update software at all. In this uh, supplementary instructions, that's what it says, right? So take off the protective film before booting it up, put in the antifreeze, then the software part, and you know, connecting to light burn and everything. So the next steps, and it goes through all of your steps on connecting to light burn. Okay, one more thing that I have found that was not in the book on unboxing it and getting it going. This axis, you can see it moves now for me. It would not move before and that is because they are were screwed in. So it's all the way in the back and then it's screwed in down here. One on each side. So you got to take both of those off as well or this won't move. I did get it turned on connected to light burn and then it was trying to move and just clunk, 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 clunk. so get these first so if you're having issues actually getting the axes to move make sure these are off really what i've got left i want to do today is i want to get it uh show you how to get it hooked up to both softwares light burn and the software it comes with and there's a whole lot more in aiming it and adjusting it we'll do that uh, next time so let's take a look at the software real quick Okay, so light burn setup. They've got really good documentation on this. Um, the main things to really, really focus on are setting your baud rate. So what we're gonna do is we go into a device. You can basically do a new one. It, I've never had it actually since the device. So it's always setting up a new one. And you can go in and essentially you go create manual, you go down to gerbil, and right now it's serial, so it's USB, so we need USB serial. You set your axis sizes. So 700X, 350 millimeter, 
and we also want to name it. So I'm going to name it Mega. And you can hit next. Now, origin. We can see that the origin is the rear left. Rear left. Auto home on startups fine if you want. And finish. So now you can see in our drop down of all of our different lasers, Mega is the last one, that's the newest one. So we can put that in. It adjusts our size. And then the most important part, device settings, baud rate. There are a few different options and you have to make sure it's really, really hard to see, but baud rate is one million. So make sure you go to one million. Most likely it will default way up here, right? 115 or something like that. It's not gonna default to a million. So get to a million. You can hit okay. All right, so you can see I've got it hooked up. I'm in light burn. I can move it around. All right, so there's two different links it shows between your different paperwork. Um, either just mega or mega dash support. There's nothing on either one of those. So that's not where the software is actually at. Let me show you where I actually found it. Okay, so I go to Mega. And over here on the side, download InDesign software. This will take you to this link, which you can click. And it will take you to InDesign-Hub. So that's where you get the software for the download. If you scroll all the way to the bottom. All right, Windows. Mac OS for Apple M chips and Mac OS for Intel chips. All right, so here is the software when you first open it. You can pick your language, go next. My machine is plugged in and it is plugged in via the USB, so it actually shows it. Can't do Wi-Fi right now because it's not set up. USB is set up. Now it sees it, so I just had to refresh it once. Connection status is good and we can start creating. And that's how easy it is to get your machine hooked up just to this, right? And then around here, there's a lot of stuff I'm gonna have to learn uh, as far as getting it actually going. But one of the things I have seen already, you can click here and you can see what's going on, whether you're on Wi-Fi or not. And if you go on this little button, you can actually pull up the info, and this is where you can check for upgrades. You can go into your settings here, and there's other settings you can, um, but network settings. If you want to get it on Wi-Fi, this is where you have to do it. All right, so that's getting it connected. Camera's working. I did put the um, honeycomb in there and a piece so that we could actually kind of see how it is. Um, there's a lot to learn in this software. The help menu's got a couple of things. I'm gonna go through that, try to learn how it works. All right, guys, uh, thanks, and we definitely wanna thank Monport uh, for the Mega so that we can try to learn and show you guys what we find along the way. If you have any questions, let us know. And don't forget to like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time.